Okay, I have a Pollux 737000 that I got from the Lock's Nest, and he tells me the only difference with the 7000 is that it has this interactive element here on what I'm calling pin one. Um, and so the only difference from the regular Pollux 7 is that interactive pin. Um, I noted that on these keys, this one has like a shorter bar here, but that doesn't come into play because um, that pin works with the interactive element and never actually reaches that bar. So in effect, all three of these keys are exactly the same. Uh, unfortunately, uh, there are, well, it's unfortunate that they're all the same because there are two shear lines in here. It's a master ring system and kind of like an interchangeable core, uh, you have two shear lines um, where there you'd have one for control, one for operating. Both of these are operating shear lines in this one. So if I use the key in here, it moves the actuator back here. See that? Um, and it would have been nice to have the other one, but these ones are interacting with the back shear line there. And um, to looking at this, the key pins, um, they're all tapered in the back. So you gotta be cautious of oversetting, and most of the drivers are also tapered in the back. And then the drivers are either tapered or rounded, rounded in the front. So you're gonna be pushing down a little bit, nudging them into place once you got them kind of set. And most of the drivers also have false gate. So coupled with trying to get to the right shear line and all those other security factors, it's a little challenging. But um, after picking at it, I found that if I go counterclockwise, that there is, um, I'm looking for these springy areas on the on the um, when I'm setting them and that tells me that I'm at uh, I have at a shear line one of the um, drivers at the not on a on a false gate so by spring areas um, basically what I'm looking for is this one's binding hard so it's not moving at all so I, I got a click out of it and it's still binding hard so I'm gonna click it more another click still binding hard and it's binding pretty hard and now you can see how much movement I get and it's springy. So that's the springy area I'm looking for on pin one there. So I'm gonna to go to number two and it's binding. All right, barely a touch and now it's springy already. So number three, click, binding hard. Click, still binding hard. And now a really, really big springy area, okay? Double checking one and two that they're still springy. And now I'm gonna to go to number four, which is a little bit tough to access with the camera in the way. But number, click, click. All right, now it's at a springy area. Uh, five, springy, six, springy, seven. A little core rotation when I push that one. So one again, all right. So they, they bind a little bit uh, because they're held on like a, a rounded area. So they let go pretty easy and you get a tiny bit of core rotation. Two is now I think set. Three is binding, all right, back to springy. I actually had to go springy and then click it past to the second springy area. So that one is really long springy. And it was actually two separate, um, I think it's like, uh, I, was, I was at the first shear line first and then the second shear line pin was really close to that, just past it, so I pushed into that. Four springy still, five, all right, six is, six is binding a little. All right now springy. Seven, I got some core rotation again. One, five, six, one, two, two is stuck. Three, four. All right, four, I'm not happy with, four, with the way four is feeling right now. I'm thinking maybe I went, um, maybe I went too far on four or maybe not, I don't know. Let's see, four is springy though. One, trying to see if I can get anything out of two. No, two is bound hard. When I push three, four popped back up, interestingly. Like it shot the, the key pin off of the, um, so I'm thinking that was probably down in the, um, that was down in the uh, tapered area of the, of the driver for that one. So let me see what's, why am I not open at this point? Oh, okay, got some rotation when I push down on four there. So I'm really close. Okay, five got me open. So 
what you want to probably do before you pick this is you want to gut it and take a photo of all your pin layout because as soon as I turn this one more weird stuff's going to happen um, I'm going to have you know driver pins drop down in chambers they weren't originally in mixing with uh, the original driver pins that were on that depending which shear line I went on it could be the front driver pins from um, from two dropping into one or if it was the back shear line it's going to be you know those dropping in so it's going to get everything mixed up so I'm going to keep turning it just to show that it is unlocked there we go so it rotated and now um, there is no pin here no key pin here because I've moved uh, this empty slot to this area there's a driver pin right here that I cannot get I can't do anything with it, I don't think let me see let me loosen it like that um, yeah this thing is really stuck here and this one bear look it, it, this one's barely springy hopefully you can see that it doesn't even come all the way to the front because there's probably short drive short drivers behind it when it had long ones before that one this one barely goes down at all probably because it has long drivers where it had short ones before um, and yeah so it's all kinds of mess and then you would have to pick it another one but I'm not gonna bother uh, things are all shuffled around so let's go ahead and, and look inside of this thing this is out and to gut this you need to take these pins out um, let me move the light a little like that and we'll move the camera down a little so to take these out so I picked this side and they're gonna be all jumbled up so I have a you know I, I took a photo of the order they're supposed to be in so you take these pins out you can take all four out and take the bar out is easier but I've slid this on and off such that um, you can kind of with enough force slide it off like that okay uh, you cannot but you can pick um, the lock like this so this side I haven't I didn't pick right so you can pick the lock like this but you can't use the key on it see the key doesn't work unless you push this rod which normally gets pushed by these two being together so if I go ahead and put that in there and push that rod manually against the table now I can open it with the key right but uh, you need that rod in there so unfortunately you can't just have a half cylinder and use the key on it it just it, the interactive elements not being pushed so that pin is not going to the right height and the lock doesn't work so but you can still pick it like this right um, so if you wanted to just pick it you could have it like this now there's a pin in here um, that needs to come out and what you want to do is you want to kind of push this inner barrel in a little bit and wiggle it until that pin falls out okay so once that pins out that's what's holding that inner barrel in so let's get I have pins rolling all over the place let's get something here so that's that pin these are the two pins I held there now what we want to do is you want to this inner barrel has springs pushing up on it so you don't want that all exploding so usually you'd use a follower or something here this pen and pull that up just to hold this stack together like that so we can remove this so it's just this outer sleeve and now I got all these things together but they're all jumbled up in this one um, and what I like to do is turn it this way around and then if you take this back one on off it just has springs okay so you can get most of them out that way uh, usually stuff wouldn't be falling out like this because they'd all be kind of level but stuff fell out because um, all the chambers are jumbled up right so what we're gonna do is there's gonna be some shuffling around as I fix the order of these things basically um, all right so let's turn it this way so pin one would be here and this is pin seven so that's probably the um, the final driver and you can tell what all the final drivers are because they have these little cups on them to uh, go on the springs this one you can see uh, maybe you can see it doesn't have a cup on it so that ended that's a middle driver ended up at the back uh, or maybe this was even on top of it this was probably on top of it actually so this is probably this guy's cap and he goes somewhere else and there's this cap here 
one fell into the middle when I was taking it apart. So I'm gonna have to sort these all. And then you see that cap was on top of another cap piece that's down in number two. I don't think you can see it, but down in there. So now um, you can start dumping them out one at a time. I'm gonna really mess this up because like I said, they're not sorted out right now. So I'm gonna keep things relatively close to their areas and then sort them out. So this one was four. See, I got another end cap piece that was in position one. And this was towards the end somewhere. And then I'll compare it to a photo I have. Now the good thing is all the key pins are in the right spot, but there's still some driver pins in there. So let's start a little bit of the sorting process based on a photo I have. Fortunately, most of the pins are fairly distinct, um, so you can sort them. All right, so now uh, let's see if I can get pin seven out. So this is a key pin. Key pin has a flat side here and a taper on the top. So there's seven. Let me go a little bit more. Number six is a really long key pin there. Same thing with number five. Okay, so this is probably wrong, right? Having two. So these actually go over one. Like this. Three has an extra little kind of uh, a master in it. And this is actually from two. And um, this guy that's in here is actually from somewhere else as well. So I'll get that out of the way. I've got number four here. So there's the key pin for number four. Sorry, this seems like such a jumbled gut. I would have just turned it back to reset it, but I wanted to show you uh, how messed up it gets when you uh, advance a uh, spot. And this is the aftermath. So I would advise if you're picking this, don't advance it a spot. Um, just turn it back again so you don't have to do all this craziness after. You better have a good photo if you want to go back to this because um, it's going to be hard to figure out with a key in. Uh, there's enough time in this video, I'll probably show you what it looks like with a key in. Let's, uh, let's see. So this looks about right, but these are probably back. Oops. Let's see, these ones on top. So all driver pins are looking pretty good. The only one that I'd be questioning are these two. Are these the same one? Yeah. Okay. So I think that's okay. I feel like I feel like the same length. Um, these two here are these the same length? No, one's shorter than the other. I think that's right. So I think those are right. Um, these two down here, these key pins look like the same length. Got this, and this guy here is probably from him. Mm, looks about right. If I look at the top of these, those should be all the kind of cap pins where they have a hole in them like that. So I think we're okay right now. And if I have enough time, I'll show you how to put it back together because that's all right. So I can see this this stack eight is really tall. So something's probably wrong here on stack eight. Um, I feel like this guy's too long right here. Like he goes here, and this shorter guy comes over here. I would have taken more time to figure out exactly when not as us pulling it out where they go rather than just dumping a wall out like that but um you know it takes time don't have time on the camera so I need a, a longer one here probably this longer one here okay well I think we're I think that looks right we'll test it with the key I know my key goes to the bottom shoe line and if anything's messed up I'll fix it afterwards we'll take a look at the pins and then we'll see if I have time for reassembly. So those are the pins there. The springs are all the same. I'm not going to pull them all out. They're just like this. Okay. Um, so for reassembly, 
what I would recommend is you take all your key pins and you can put them in first. Make sure you put the flat side down into there and the tapered side towards the driver pins. Now what I'm going to do is any chambers that are pretty deep, I'm going to put the first driver pin on. And actually I can check now to see if this is the right pin because you can see a little bit of wear on here at where the shear line is. So that's lining up with the shear line, so I think that's the right pin there. That guy. So far everything looks okay. As far as wear at the shear line. Alright, so that's really short, so you're not going to fit in. So now I got these guys in here like this. I can take the next one. Now there's a lip on the outside edge of one of the sides. Well, I guess there's a tiny one here, but not really. This one has a major lip on this side. Okay. So the lip faces towards the key pins. Now that you have some sticking up, you can line this up to take that on nicely. And you can put the rest of your pins in. So pin one. And these should all stick up a little bit. Right, this is another middle driver pin, so it shouldn't. So I'll take the middle driver pins and I'll put them in because they shouldn't clear this shear line, otherwise, they would be doing nothing, right? Uh, the last driver pin would be doing nothing. So everything's short, and now I just. Oh, do I have one more? I have one more. Okay, now I can see there's only room for the final spring touching driver pins. So put the last of these in here. Um, I'll take these back out again actually after I put them in. Right, so that's how they'd all be. I should have not done this part because I'm going to take them all back out again to show you the key. I know that my key works with this final shear line, so my key should lift them all to the shear line. Except you're going to see something funny from pin one. And I don't know if I can get that last one out. There we go. You're going to see something funny from pin one, pin one, which is the interactive element, right? So if I put this in here like this, it should lift pin one way out. But you can see the rest, hopefully, hopefully. the rest are flush and pin one sticking up because that's the interactive element. I can push it down on it because it's spring loaded, right? So that test shows me that the key that I got everything right. Let's go ahead and put these back in again to show you how I would go about finishing the reassembly. Now you see these two are too high to put those in because they just got stuck by some lube or something. So I'll push them back down. Now you want to get them all kind of flat. And what I do is these springs kind of stay in here. So tilt this a little bit. Hopefully I can get it focused. And line it up with the springs here. And you can actually put these springs face down. I didn't get them lined up right. I got to turn it one more. You can put them face down like that. Okay. And then you can squeeze it together. So there's your your stack, okay. Then I put it down this way around, okay. Now that I have it this way around, I hold the bottom of the top. Um, there's three pieces, right? So I'm holding the bottom of the top piece, and now I'm going to go ahead and take this and drop it down like that. I'll reach in with my pen to hold the stack so it doesn't spring apart, and drop that down, all right. So now, it's not going to really spring out, but you want to hold it anyways, just in case. You want to get this um, lined up here, so that it's like at the unlocked position. That will make this uh, pin able to be dropped in there. You can use a tweezer. Put that in. And then you can see the pin sticking out a bit. Just kind of push on this, maybe wiggle it back and forth, and then you should be able to just tap that down. Now, um, you need your actuator on here, like that. And there's a flat part to this. You're going to want that um, on the top because the inside of this has a flat spot that it lines up to. And then you want to slide these back together, like that. Grab your pins. Now, these would be normally flush, uh, hammered all the way in, but they are a major pain to take out. So I just put them in like this. 
and then I'll probably take a mallet and put them in a little bit um, and then you can easily you know poke them back out that way so there we go that is the Pollock 7 system 7000 uh, it's a pretty fun lock actually and it looks really cool so thanks that's it